able to spend, have str more strategic time mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to go more in depth in issues. So my goal is to get the board and the organization more organized, better managed, still have room for people to participate and get involved and you know, give their experience and expressions. Um, when we were interviewing Lucas, we said, now the village is made up primarily of older women mm -hmm. who are strong-willed, opinionated, and know how things should be done. And he said, well, I've had experience with that at the Art Institute mm -hmm. and others. So, so ha enabling folks to contribute their gifts, but at the same time, to let go of some other things mm -hmm. and let other people do them is a real challenge. Yeah. Hello, welcome to another episode of Crooked Courage. We are so excited to have one of our very own members on here today, uh -huh. Ina Grace. And Ina Grace has been a long time member, mm -hmm. which means she's been here for a couple of decades. And uh, she is also the president of The Village, which is just a wonderful organization uh, that provides community and care uh, for seniors. I'm sure she'll elaborate a little bit more, but Anna Grace, it's so good to have you on the show today. Well, welcome, thank you, welcome. I think. <laughs> so my first question for you is, where did life begin for you? Like, I know that a lot of people at our church and in High Park, you know, were not born here, so. Well, I was born and raised in Tumwa, Iowa, Southeast Iowa. <clears throat> it, um, at that time, was the home of a big meatpacking plant, Morell's. Mm -hmm. And my father was a meat cutter. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, my sons tend to be anti-union, and I try to remind them, if it hadn't been for my father's meatpacking union and making very good wages, I probably wouldn't have gone to college and mm -hmm. met their father, and they wouldn't be here. But it doesn't seem to sway them much. But Wow, wow. So is that kind of like more of a rural or a suburban? Or well, I, I think a tumble was maybe thirty or 40,000 when I was there. Actually, Sandy Wilson, who used to be a member of this congregation and is a member of the Hyde Park, lives in Hyde Park. Mm -hmm. um, we were talking with him the other day because he supports financially the yoga programs that the village does. Mm -hmm. But Sandy flies small airplanes. And Ottumwa, Iowa, during World War II, had a naval air force base, mm -hmm. which trained pilots to fly onto uh, aircraft mm -hmm. carriers. Anyway, Sandy is involved in a project in Ottumwa where they're trying to redevelop the base, the Air Force base, and bring um, some industry and businesses in there. So it was very interesting talking with Sandy. And I also had to tell him, I have a cousin who lives in Fairfield, Iowa, mm -hmm. and she happened to mention on Facebook the canteen. Now the canteen is an Ottumwa institution. It's a little place. They make like loose meat sandwiches, kind of like made rights, but better. Mm -hmm. And it's in an alley. And Ottumwa has gone through various redevelopments of the downtown. And every time they try to do that, they try to get rid of the canteen because they'd be right in the middle of everything. And petitions would come up to save it. Mm -hmm. So the canteen, so I told Sandy the next time he flies into Ottumwa, he needs to go to the canteen. So you never know when you're going to make connections with people. Wow, wow. When was the last time you went back or visited? Probably my grandmother died in um, 1990. Mm -hmm. She was born in 2000, I mean, in one, what, 1900? Okay, mm -hmm. so she was 90 years old. Wow. So actually, we went back. Actually, we went back and we had a problem with our car. Mm -hmm. And so Paul took it down to the Buick people. And as they were working on it, they ran it into one of their posts mm -hmm. and damaged the frame. Uh -huh. So we decided to buy a new car. So we bought a new Buick. Mm -hmm. And driving at home, um, Iowa has roads that connect you to the interstates. And this one was, we, as we drove home, was a very straight mm -hmm. road. Mm -hmm. And my husband was a long distance runner in college. And he always wants to get to the head of the line. So he's not the slowest driver. And, and mm -hmm. he was, there weren't any cars, we were speeding, got stopped by a highway patrolman. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. But Paul talked his way out of it, said, this is a new car. Mm-hmm. Didn't quite know how, how it ran, you know, just testing it out. And anyway, he didn't give us a ticket. But that's mm. my last memory of being wow, wow. in so, a town wall. How did you get from Iowa to Illinois? Well, I went to the University of Iowa for college. Okay. Champaign-Urbana or Chicago? No, no. Iowa. Oh, oh, sorry. University of Iowa and Iowa City. Okay. And then um, then met my first husband, Alan Tomes, while we were at school. Actually, we studied at the Wesley Foundation Mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. And uh, George Patterson, who was the campus minister, married us. Mm-hmm. And my uh, my former husband was a lawyer um, trust officer in, in banking. So we moved to Davenport, where he worked at the Davenport Bank and Trust. Mm-hmm. And then when my youngest son, who was born in 1968, was very little, we moved to Dubuque, Iowa. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And where Alan was vice president trust officer of Dubuque Bank and Trust. And actually, my younger son, Eric, still lives in Dubuque. So we do traveled to Dubuque fairly mm-hmm. often. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But while in Dubuque, raised little kids, got involved in various community activities. Mm-hmm. Um, through the Council of Churches, I was on the board of a nonprofit. We built the um, Council of Churches and Catholic Charities got together, we raised money, we built a high rise for elderly. Well, it's a high-rise in Ottumwa. Probably wouldn't mm-hmm. be a high-rise in Chicago. Mm-hmm. But. And so various kinds of community activities. Um, I went back to school, was working on a master's in guidance and counseling. Mm-hmm. And I had to take, I'd finished all the coursework except for statistics and something about measurements. And I can't add two and two. Mm-hmm. And so I decided to go to seminary. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Because, and you just left that degree? Yeah. Okay. Well, okay. You know, I learned a lot. It was helpful. Uh, yeah. Okay. But actually, Dubuque has a, um, quite a few colleges. Um, Loris College, the University of Dubuque, and Clark College. Mm-hmm. And then we also had, had a number of seminaries. And I went to Wartburg, which was a Lutheran seminary, mm-hmm. for f- four years, three years, however. Anyway, as I got ready to graduate, various folks talked to me about a graduate degree. Mm -hmm. And there were issues with my first marriage, and so my first husband and I separated amicably, fortunately. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I moved to Chicago to go to the University of Chicago Divinity School. Oh, okay. So that's how I got to Chicago. And about that time, as I came to Chicago, I had encountered Paul Dietrich at, well, actually, I mean, I told you the story of the first time that my current husband, Paul Dietrich, and I met each other. He was the consultant for the National um, Board of Discipleship mm-hmm. in Na- for the United Methodist Church in Nashville, Tennessee. And I was in a section that didn't do very well with the process. Mm-hmm. And at the end of the meeting, I stood up and complained about the process. That's how he met me. Right, right. He kind of said to himself, I never want to see that woman again. Uh-huh. <laughs> but then he taught a course at Wartburg, mm-hmm. and we connected, and we were both members of the Iowa Conference of the United Methodist Church. Okay. So when I moved to Chicago, and I was separated, and he was separated, and we encountered one another again, and we were married in 1982. Uh-huh. So you don't waste no time when you uh, find someone you like. No. <laughs> well, it took, it took a few years. It took a few years. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There, yeah. Was, there was a span of three, four years there of sorting okay. things out. And mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and um, we like Hyde Park. And so Paul was the director of the Center for Parish Development, which was located in Naperville. Mm-hmm. And he decided to move it into Hyde Park. And... I finished my Ph.D. at Mm -hmm. the University of Chicago Divinity School in Systematic Theology. Mm -hmm. We were married before I graduated. And then once I graduated, I started working with him at the Mm -hmm. center. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But when I came to Chicago to go to graduate school at the the university, um, well, the first person I sat down next to in class was Rebecca Chubb. 
Mm-hmm. And Becky's husband, Mark, was pastor of United Church of Hyde Park. Mm-hmm. That's how I started coming. And actually, when Paul and I were married, Mark officiated, and Becky was my matron of honor. Mm-hmm. Now, a sidebar for those who knew, I just reconnected with Rebecca a couple of days ago. She sent me an email to friend. Wow. But came to discover Rebecca graduated from the Divinity School and then was on the faculty. Mm -hmm. Then Mm -hmm. she went to be on the faculty at Emory Mm -hmm. Theology. Then she became the provost of Emory and began to get into more administration. So she was president of Colgate, for a while and President Swarthmore, I think, but then became the president of the University of Denver. But as I discovered, as I reconnected with Becky and started reading some of the articles that have been put out recently, in 2017, she was driving to her doctor's office and got lost. Hmm. And so after a conversation and tests, discovered she had early onsets of Alzheimer's. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So she was like 67. Wow. But the first thing her doctor said to her was, you quit your job mm-hmm. now. Mm-hmm. Because being president of a university is very taxing. But, so so again, reconnecting with somebody from my early eight days here in Hyde Park and at United Church. Yeah, yeah. Do you do a lot of reflecting or looking back over your life? Not a lot. Okay. I think okay. I'm busy and active enough now. <clears throat> mm-hmm that um, it keeps me occupied. Yeah, yeah. So how has your faith informed your journey? Well, I mean, I don't want to blame my faith for my journey. (laughs) (laughs) Leaving my husband, getting a divorce, moving away. Um, I, I think early on in the stages when there were difficulties in my marriage, you know, it was back in the 70s. And... You know, women were still supposed to stay at home, take Mm -hmm. care of the kids, you know, take care of their husband, Mm -hmm. you know, be engaged in community activities, but that was kind of it. And it just wasn't enough for me. Mm -hmm. Plus my husband, who was a very, my former husband, who was a very nice fellow, um, was acting, I mean, we were members of the country club. I remember when we separated, I had just bought some new clothes to wear like to cocktail parties. Mm -hmm. And I took him back and said, I'm never going to another cocktail party rest of my life. So it just, it wasn't a very, I didn't do very well in that climate. Yeah, yeah. Of a banker, lawyer's wife, as hard as he would try to keep it. So there was always something missing. Mm -hmm. So I think it was utilizing my brain and my experience and getting more educated and mm-hmm, mm-hmm. beginning to think a lot about things. So mm-hmm. that's, it's my faith, but maybe in a different way than some people experience it. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Do you, what's on your book stand to read? What, do you have a book that you haven't read that you would like to read? Well, at, when I was working for the center, that I either read theology or cozy mysteries. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't read so much theology anymore because I found um, when I worked at the center, I was the director of theological research, Mm -hmm. fancy title. But basically, my role was to help church people envision the life and ministry of their church in ways different than they currently experience them. Mm -hmm. And as I began working with congregations, I found that engaging in Bible study was a way to get people to kind of slow down, begin to share and talk with one another about their faith, but also wrestling with what is God calling us to be and do in this particular situation. Mm -hmm. And so most of the books that I read, I read them for particular contexts. Like when we were working with United Church of Christ in Hawaii, Mm -hmm. I wanted them to do more of the history and culture of the United Church of Christ. So I did a lot of reading in that. Um, I worked with Native Native Hawaiians and others in Hawaii around Bible studies that were done in local churches. Mm -hmm. So if we were doing a Bible study on the Gospel of of Matthew, I do a lot of reading in Matthew. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. So most of my theological reading was trying to apply to particular situations, mm -hmm. to questions or issues that people were raising. Okay. okay. So now probably I, I read a lot of cozy mysteries. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Most of them are not real taxing. You know, you don't have to think a lot. Right. Although Paul and I have gotten to like the author Anne Perry, pa pa is it Perry? Yeah, mm -hmm. and who's a Canadian mm -hmm. who writes mystery. She and Hillary Clinton have written a book together. Oh, really? Yes. Recently? It's, it's the, yes, just recently. It's just out. It's about a Secretary of State who gets involved in a mystery some way. So it's there. fiction? Yes, it's fiction. Oh. Huh. Yeah. That sounds interesting. Oh, she's fairly well known a lot. Uh, she's very well publicized and read um, Gama Inspector Gamache is. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So Paul and I have gotten the habit of reading, he, he reads out loud. It used to be both of us would read, mm -hmm. but I would read too fast. So now he does it. Yeah, so you guys read a book together is kind yes. of? Yes, yes. Out loud? He reads out loud. I sometimes tend to fall asleep. Okay. You know, I get relaxed <laughs> and listening to Paul's voice. And, <laughs> but we also started reading out loud because, you know, for the for about 25 years we've been going to St. Martin, mm -hmm. Caribbean island, and we didn't have a television. And so a lot, a lot of what we would do at night was read books out loud. So we'd read them together. That's really nice. I mean, I, I feel like it takes a little bit more energy, like when I'm reading a book, like, it, it, like you say, it slows the speed down, but... Yes. Um, I guess it's a nice way of building community. Well, and I kind of have to find books that both of us, like, who's the fellow who writes the number one ladies detective agency? Yeah, Nathan McCaw, I think, or yes. something. Yeah. But it, so we've read practically all of the books that so he So you guys, written. so me and Paul Josiah really did those books. together. Yes, yes. And there's and, a lot of interesting topics and room for discussion. Yes. You know, in reading those books. So, wow. He, wow. he writes well. He paints good pictures, images of things. Yeah, yeah. So what's a, what's a favorite TV show that you like to watch on TV? Um, Do you watch TV? Oh, unfortunately, I am a television person. I like to watch... I do a lot of counted cross stitch. Yes, uh -huh. and I like big, complicated projects because I find you can't just watch television usually. So I usually do the counted cross stitch and watch. As I say, I like to watch Turner Classic movies types. Okay, okay. But Paul and I kind of have I'm, we subscribe to Acorn and to BritBox. We mm -hmm. like the British mysteries. Okay. So <coughs> Paul particularly likes the series. New Tricks. Okay, okay. Which is an older, although I, I don't know if they're still filming, but it was retired detectives who were hired to do un, unsolved cases. Okay, okay. Plus, he likes things like Inspector Lewis. Uh -huh. um, we've watched all of the Inspector Morse. Okay, and okay. All, you know, those kind of the, the British, I like Midsummer Murders. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Paul doesn't like them as well as I do. He kind of either. Right. So finding that kind of like path. So what are some other things you enjoy doing besides you know watching TV, reading, uh, cross stitch? Well, counter cross. I mean, I, I don't understand why, but I could sit all day and do counter cross stitch, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. except my neck and my fingers are starting to get sore. But that keeps me busy. But then, of course, with the village stuff. Mm -hmm. And every now and then we have a church meeting to go to. Right, right. Every, just every now. And then. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. The council. Yeah. But that's plenty for me to do. Right, right. Keeping you similar. So, what's your favorite holiday? Or do you? Or mm, blah blah. Not really. Not so I, much so. Maybe, maybe probably Thanksgiving because of the gathering and families. Now. Mm -hmm. For the last few years, Paul has a son who lives in Cambridge, Massachusetts, and his partner, Catherine. We've gone there for Thanksgiving to be with them, but then Paul's brother lives in Martha's Vineyard, mm -hmm. and he just turned 90. Mm -hmm. So, like, for example, this year, we went to Dan and Catherine's, mm -hmm. and then we drove down to Falmouth, Massachusetts, which is just before you get on the ferry to go to Martha's Vineyard. 
And Paula's brother and his wife came over and their daughter rented a house and cooked Thanksgiving dinner. So probably the gab, it's not only the food, I do like pumpkin pie though, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but the gathering, the gatherings. Yeah, Christmas yeah. have been more, like Paul and I will be to just alone, the two of us, for thank you mm -hmm. for Christmas. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Well, you kind of talk about what keeps you occupied. What brings you joy? Well, probably completing a section of the crowd, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> um, also, we just, at the village, just hired our first full-time executive director. Okay. And he almost is too good to be true. Mm -hmm. um, Lucas Livingston, who's a young man in his 40s, but mm -hmm. he, for the last 20 years, had worked at the Art Institute mm -hmm. in outreach and lifelong learning. So he's been engaged with seniors mm -hmm. in these various activities. And so seeing Lucas come on board and starting to get involved is has been a real joy to see him yeah, yeah. engaged. Are there any goals as president of the board of the village? Are there any goals you guys have um, beyond what you already are doing? Lots, too many. Mm -hmm. um, the pandemic has, while we while the pandemic we kept ex particularly exercise programs. Mm -hmm and um, an informational kind of presentation thing twice a week on Zoom. Mm -hmm. We've kept things going and actually recruited some new members and raised some new money. But we didn't do, because we couldn't meet in person, mm -hmm. we haven't done very much with board development. Mm -hmm. And the village started in 2014. Mm -hmm. And Susan Alito, had the vision and the energy and enthusiasm and gathered a few folks with her to start the village. So we have a board that has some of the founders mm -hmm. still on it. But at that stage, everybody was involved in everything. Mm -hmm. And now we've moved to become a bigger organization with one full-time staff person and two part-time. Mm -hmm. So we're transitioning, trying to help the board transition from a founding board into a governing board where everybody doesn't know everything. And that's been hard for some people. Mm -hmm. For example, we have a number of committees and our board meetings used to consist of reports from all of the committees, you know. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so. I, I See, I didn't expect to be president of the village in April. Mm -hmm. I thought my friend Barbara Norrish was going to do that. But she had just been president of their condo and didn't want to take it on. So at the last minute, Gary called and said, you know, we don't have anybody. And I said, well, you mm -hmm. don't have anybody. Mm -hmm. So, but as I've gotten involved, my goal is to better organize and manage the board. So mm -hmm. we've done the consent calendar, mm -hmm. which hasn't worked so well for the church council, but mm -hmm. has worked very well for the village. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Because, so all of the report, and I expect everybody to read the reports. Right, right. The weekend right. before. Then we're able to spend, have str more strategic time mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to go more in depth in issues. So my goal is to get the board and the organization more organized, better managed, still have room for people to participate and get involved and you know, give their experience and expressions. Um, when we were interviewing Lucas, we said, now the village is made up primarily of older women mm -hmm. who are strong-willed, opinionated, and know how things should be done. And he said, well, I've had experience with that at the Art Institute mm -hmm. and others. So, so ha enabling folks to contribute their gifts, but at the same time to let go of some other things mm -hmm. and let other people do them is a real challenge. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's been really great having you on the show. I've learned a little bit about you. Um, my final question I usually just ask everyone on the show is, 
do you have anything on your bucket list you'd like to do? And by that I mean something in your lifetime. Is there something left that you'd like to do? Well, we have been so fortunate. When Paul and I worked together at the center, we traveled. We taught courses mm -hmm. in Australia, mm -hmm. in Germany. Wow. We had a five-year project in Hawaii. Oh. And for a girl raised in Iowa to go to Hawaii, where there's no dominant ethnic group, the multiplicity of different cultures and experiences all coming together. Um, you know, and when we would go, then we had a lot of interaction with folks from the Netherlands mm -hmm. around practical theology. Um, some of their students and professors came over and traveled around with us to see what we were doing mm -hmm. in our consulting business. Right. And so we were back and forth to the Netherlands. So I think Paul still thinks he would like to travel. Mm -hmm. And I say, okay, you get me a first class ticket mm -hmm. and a direct flight I and might consider yeah. it, <laughs> but we don't have that kind of money to do that. So I've done the traveling mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the different populations. Um, I probably would like to be able to see my kids a little bit more, except my grandchildren keep growing up Yeah, yeah. and going off to college. And my oldest grandson, who graduated from U of C, has now gotten his law degree, passed the bar, and is working in a law firm in Houston. Mm. So it's a little more difficult to get in touch with everybody. Yeah. But I'm, now Paul kids me, because I usually say I'm almost happy. I don't want to say I'm happy, because then bad things will happen. Right, right, right. Right, <laughs> right, right. Leave a little room, right? Right, right. <laughs> But, but you're very content. You're yes. in a space in your life where you're content. Now, we are going to St. Martin in January right. for eight weeks, which is a little long for me. Paul likes it. I take a lot of jigsaw puzzles. I take a lot of books, mysteries, mm -hmm. um, DVDs, because we do have a DVD mm -hmm. player down mm -hmm. there. But, but no Netflix uh, in St. Martin. Well, actually, Maybe. when we're in St. Martin, we're technically in France. so. The people where we've stayed do have a TV, but most of the channels are French. But they did have a Netflix mm -hmm. that was better. When you're out of the country and you try to tap into your streaming channels, they don't, they're not yeah. the same. I imagine, I imagine. But going somewhere warm sounds like really yes, fun to yes. some and, of us. And it's kind of nice to take cold. a break. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and of course, I tan very easily. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I get brown. Paul just burns mm -hmm. and then burns, and then his skin grows things that his dermatologist gets to take off. Right, right, right. But it is warm, it's nice, but I will be very glad to get home in March. Yeah, yeah, That's well you'll be home before Easter, so, you know, safe trip. Thank you so much for being yes. on Crooked Courage. I hope it's helpful.